I'm going to jump right into Dog Days of Summer um, because I keep referring to it. And for me, this was creating the pet photography market. This was the single event for us that created the market. So we're going to spend this whole segment actually talking about it, taking questions. I'll try to answer any questions you have and going into as much detail um, as I can about the event. But the basic gist, and it's evolved. We've actually been doing it five years now. So our first one was about five years ago. And I already mentioned it was um, really just started on a whim because one of my employees had a puppy, took the shot, thought, oh, you know what? Let's, let's try to do some kind of promotion. Because we do these limited editions, we call them already, where it's like these special quick sessions once a month. Maybe it's kids dressed up in ballerina outfits, or maybe we go to the lake, or, you know, so we already had the structure in place to do something like this. So we thought, well, let's just pick a day where all we do is photograph pets. I literally, within two weeks, had um, gotten the, um, some cards printed at White House, set them out of the vet's office, put some stuff on our website, um, sent out an email blast. That was the only way we marketed it. And my initial year, and I'll tell you how we changed over the years, because um, you can learn from my mistakes. The initial time we did it, I only blocked out one afternoon. Um, and I thought, oh, we might get you know five, six clients. I mean, we've never done this before. Will people really come in with their pets? You know, I just, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and so what we did is, there, there was no session fee. Um, you just had to bring in a large bag of dog food. We said a bag of dog food um, that we would donate to the local animal shelter, and then you would get a session and a five by seven, like a mini, like a 10 minute session. Um, within a day, we had to like start answering the phones. The gallery, we do photograph people too, because it was nonstop, like ridiculous. Literally, we had phone calls where someone would call from an office, and because they got the email blast. This is the beauty of when you think about something being viral and how inexpensive it can be just to say do an email blast or using Facebook, using social media, um, because then they were able to share that with their family and friends. We had a woman in an office call say, oh, hold on, someone else wants to make one, pass the phone along that we booked multiple sessions. And so um, I had a choice because it sold out, like it sold out right away. And so. Um, did I want to like make this a bigger deal? How many, you know, do we extend this? So we extended it a day. Then we extended it two days. And then we extended it half a day. And I finally cut it off at about, it was like a two and a half day event and we photographed over 130 animals and had a wait list of almost 30. So um, it was pretty intense. It was really exciting. Um, for me, it took, um, I was scared. Like we literally had just, finished the remodel and the whole back space that's now my studio, like wood floors and couches and furniture. I'm like, oh my gosh, 130 animals. Like, this is gonna all get ruined. And so I have all kinds of tips to tell you because it's amazing how smoothly it ran because there's very specific things you can do um, to help something like this go smoothly. So I just wanna point out a couple things really quick. Um, the first year, we didn't charge anything. You bring a bag of dog food. Okay, what was wrong with that scenario? Believe it or not, as lame as it is, some people showed up, bag of dog food. Most people did bigger bags. Um, also, very important to note that you need to, con if you're gonna do it this way, you need to contact the shelter because I mean, dogs have specific food. Certain shelters may only take a specific food, um, and that's not really good for the dogs to be switching them all kinds of foods anyway. So to, to communicate with that vendor, whoever that is, um, that you're, able to donate this food. Plus for us, it was 2,600 pounds of food. Like we couldn't just show up and dump that on them without them knowing we're coming. <laughs> so um, we need to make sure there were people there to help unload it, that they had a space to store it. So there's a little bit of prep work, um, which we didn't do the first year because we didn't expect the results we got. So um, a few things we changed. This is actually what the card, and then I think actually after the first year, I think all we did was um, email blast and website. Because if we got that kind of response the first year, you know, why invest any money you know, printing anything when we could sell out the event um, with just doing something digital? And so the, we decided to make it for two days. We decided to charge a fee. So the $25 fee would go to the studio. And then we specified a 30-pound bag of dog food. So that, that, helped, um, that helped out a little bit. Same thing, they still get a five by seven um, and this 10-minute session. Plus what this did, by taking that money, they're committed, they prepaid over the phone. So we didn't really have a lot of no-shows that first year that I remember, I don't remember that being an issue, but it could be. And so um, that will help prevent 
that sort of an issue. And then the next year, we raise it to $50. Um, you may be sitting there thinking, I do not want to photograph that many animals. You know what? It's the whole, you know, you can charge more than make it $200. You know, make it, you know, you'll have less takers probably, but it's no different than how my business model's kind of changed in my, my, the rest of my business. For me though, limited editions, when we talk about these specifically, th I go into them knowing this is not my normal sessions. I look at these as gateway sessions to get people in the door, to see my space, to see my studio, to see my work. So that way they're like, oh gosh, like I'm bringing my pet here, but I want to bring my kids too. Like it's not just about actually photographing the pet on that day. So we have special pricing. Um, I know that although some people will spend a lot, the averages will be less, but it's just, it's a, it's a good business model. I just shoot a bunch and it's more volume shooting. I don't want to shoot that in my normal day-to-day -day work, but once a year or every other month with the limited edition, I actually enjoy it. I actually like, I, it almost like energizes me. I like almost that artistic challenge of, okay, I'm gonna go into today and do as many different variety of things as I can. It's almost the same energy I have with going into this week and like all these shoots and I don't know what to expect and it might be a little crazy. It's that same feeling that dog days kind of is for me. Um, so that's the, the basic gist. So the tying in with the, so part of it's about giving back and tying in with the animal shelter. Um, you do not need a space to do this. And, and we actually later on have a video we'll show you. Um, we visited one of the, um, the barking lounge, a dog daycare next door, that it was a great space that you could easily, um, as a photographer, build a relationship with someone like them and host an event at a space like that. So um, I'm not limit. This is not limited to people who have a studio. In some ways, it would actually be better <laughs> to have it at a space like that because you would eliminate some of the the chaos of that the, you know that many an animals coming through your space. Um, so this has evolved though. Now we've been doing it five years. Just so you guys know, this has evolved to where now it's um, we kept it as the fifty dollars, the thirty pound pack of dog food, and we just do an email blast. Um, we actually almost half of our sessions now. It's just like our business. It's actually repeat clients. It's the same clients coming back to dog days every year. Um, but then we get the new ones still. It's not as many, and I, I actually find that, and I'm okay with that. With a lot of my events, like we came out with this big bang, we created this market, and then. Um, what's cool is I still do the event every year, but it's only one day. Like, I don't extend it. It is what it is. And anybody who wants to come the rest of the year, they pay my normal prices. It's a normal session. That's how the market got created. Because before dog days of summer, I was not having clients just bringing their pets to, in to be photographed. Now, multiple times a year, I have clients coming in to pay, I mean, they're paying higher averages than my regular clients. I mean, we're talking just the pets even, people not in it. You know, two, three, four thousand um, dollars on wall portraits, on Christmas cards, on albums. Um, that's still not my main business. I am not sitting here saying, oh, look, I'm doing this pet photography and I'm making millions doing it. I'm still children and family and this is a wonderful addition to my product line that I'm offering my clients. But it's really exciting because it was an untapped market. And I love to share it because I feel like people um, not necessarily with this, but maybe with this, but something else. Like, you get people who are, oh, like, we don't have that in our area. Oh, people don't pay for this in our area. Oh, we don't have cool mountains like Seattle to, you know, shoot in. We only have cornfields. Um, you know, like, you have all these things that people like, like to be negative about. And I look at, oh, you don't have a market for f pet photography. No one's doing pet photography in your area. It's like the challenge. Like, awesome. Like, be the one to do it. Like, we were the ones that did that. So you know what happened. Of course, there's other photographers in our area doing more pet photography, and that's okay. Like, there's enough for all of us. That goes back to saying I don't need to be the client for everybody. So um, just, a, just a few kind of things. But I, wanted, I have a video I put together um, that gives you just a little insight. I know we're actually going to shoot a live Dog Days of Summer event on Saturday, which is really exciting. Um, but this video will at least be a good intro to what we're going to talk about this morning. I'm gonna walk a hundred miles I'm gonna whistle all the while If that's what it takes to make me smile I'm gonna walk a hundred miles I'm gonna run right up this hill Summer sky or winter chill If I gotta take a break I will But I'm gonna run right up this hill
right here in my open hands and maybe i'm just a little girl a little girl with great big plans i'm gonna go and take a chance i'm gonna learn to ballet dance learn a little something about romance i'm gonna go and take a chance Doesn't matter what the future brings I'm gonna live a crazy dream That gives you a little window into what um, the event looks like, but I now I want to give you more concrete um, details. So this is an example of, um, and I know you guys and the um, the audience feel free to look in your folders under your chairs. There's examples of some of the stuff um, in there, and actually there's more of it. I think you're going to be getting um, on Saturday as well. But basically, we have a limited edition calendar that we put out every year. We get something printed. We um, put it online. And Dog Days of Summer is always um, one of those events. And so we do all, and tomorrow we're going to go into um, some of the other events that we do, some of the other event marketing. Um, but the actual details about Dog Days of Summer, um, the specifics, is that it's a large bag of dog food for the animal shelter. And we've done anything from 0 to 25 to $50 for a 10-minute session in one 5 by 7 um, we, um, the first year did gift bags, so kind of little swag bags. This is an example of what, um, like once the event became so big, <laughs> I was like, oh, kind of backtracking of wanting to get some other people um, involved, and I was able to share with them the amount of people involved. So like the one question we made earlier about approaching vendors, you know, if you do something like this and you're having a good response, like that's obviously really good value. Um, to the other vendors. So the dog bakery actually gave us cute little um, dog bags. We got something, I think, from like PetSmart and the vet. And we even had um, little doggy biscuits with our V Gallery logo um, made on them from the dog bakery. So this is not something we do every year. Like this is like a lower investment session. So I mean, that would eat into. Um, it's just a little more work. It would cost a little bit more. But in a lot of cases, and when I talk about events in general, there's basically a checklist of things that we do. And, and swag bags or gift bags is definitely one of them um, because of the experience factor. Because if you think about it, 138 people coming in, let's say half of them had never been into our store before. Um, Maybe they'd heard about us. Maybe they'd seen work in a friend's home of their child or family. But then now they're seeing large prints on the wall of people, of pets. Um, they're being treated like super awesome, like coming here for this thing. That What's amazing is because it tied in with charity, people were so awesome and like so cool and so generous. And like, oh, I'm sorry, my dog's not doing OK. I'm like, your dog's doing great. Like they didn't even, it's, some, it's almost felt to me, like they didn't even care if they hardly had any good pictures to choose from. They were just so excited to be part of the event. So obviously, on the flip side, yes, we gave them wonderful images to choose from. But I think people that first year especially came thinking it was going to be cookie cutter, thinking it was just going to be like like dog pictures with Santa. Like just, you know, OK, set down, snapshot, maybe not like something unusual, artistic, creative. And like you saw in those images, like we tried to do a lot of variety. Um, so people were actually really surprised, which made it worth the effort. And we still did these orders on, in the studio. 
So um, part of the organization factor that makes us run like clockwork um, and very smoothly is we set all that up ahead of time. So they, when they call and they prepay, they book their session, they actually go ahead and book their return order appointment um, for about two weeks later. Um, they're only going to see, I would say, like seven, seven to 12, 15 images maybe. Um, but if I had just put these online and they're already getting a free five by seven, what would happen? Like most people would just take their free five by seven. That first year alone, we made $10,000 um, just off of additional orders from this effort and work. Now that was a lot of work. Like, yeah, I mean, I could shoot a couple sessions of a different type and maybe, um, you know, get that kind of money. But the residuals you can't even track from this because now out of those 130, let's say just a small portion of them returned, like let's say, 10 people, let's say five people, returned for other types of sessions or even a regular dog session the next year, spending our, our normal averages, like it's way more than worth it, like, like beyond. Um, and, and this guy, that was 130 people now that have images in their home, in their office. Like when I talk about you have to sell it to show it, and you talk about building a portfolio, and somebody asks, you know, how do you, you know, start doing that? Like, this is a great way, and it was free. Like, it, my clients paid for it. <laughs> Basically, my clients paid for me to get marketing in the community um, with these pet images. There's the image of the little V Gallery dog biscuits. Um, again, the first year we did it, I mean, I was be up front with you guys. The first year we did it was our biggest year. I mean, that's when we had the most, we put the most effort into it, but I didn't feel the need to keep doing it on that level um, because we were still booking and then getting the people coming in um, for sessions throughout the year. And, and I tend to do that like with the event, like I want to really go out with a uh, kind of a bang, you know, initially. Volunteers, this is where I'm gonna um, talk about some of the specifics on how um, you can stay really organized. I, I will tell you, this first year I was so scared and I was so paranoid um, because of, I thought about the studio getting ruined, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to do it, like what did I get myself into? Um, so I almost like overthought it, overplanned, overprepared. I can tell you that I think our last photo shoot, that first year Dog Days of Summer ended at like 6.30, and we were at the local Mexican restaurant having a margarita at seven, and the studio was impeccable and perfect. Because what I did, I solicited friends, kids, who I knew loved pets, clients, kids, um, the, you could ask the, uh, anybody who likes animals, like my friend's um, daughter helps at the local pet shop feeding the fish, and animals, like she likes animals. So getting a handful of those kinds of kids they would eat this event up. And all they have to do, they literally, I had these little aprons I made that had dog biscuits and squeakers and Swiffers and lint rollers and we had vacuums. And all they did all day long was kind of like doggy control, making sure like the two pound dog wasn't leaving when the 200 pound dog was coming in. And that they just, every time a client would leave, they would be just lint rolling the couches. Um, and it was a very low investment to have the peace of mind that the studio looked great um, and there were no, no issues or problems. Of course, we put a little garbage um, can and a little sack um, outside the studio for the, the dogs to hopefully use if they had to go to the bathroom. I think in the five years, we've only had, I would say less than five um, animals actually um, go to the bathroom in the studio. The reason being, these are quick. These are quick. We get them in, we get them out, we have a system. We have everything. In fact, I have some of this stuff I was gonna show you guys. Um, you should have copies of some of this too, but we actually have a whole system. Um, what you're looking at here um, is our client information folder um, that it's actually through Success where we made a template that when you put in somebody's session and order and they pay, you can print invoice, or in this case, we say print envelope. And we literally feed an envelope through the printer and it prints out on this um, great little, what is that, maybe a six by nine um, envelope that has their release on it that they have to sign. Or in this case, we paw print with an ink pad. No. <laughs> the owner has to sign. Um, and it's got all their information, their email address. And we, we actually have one of my employees print everything off. They put them in these little folders that we just got at the um, office store that if there were 130 animals coming in, we literally had 134 folders that were like this with the envelope in there ready to go their return appointment card in there so we get these people in and out as quickly as possible and it's a better experience for them they can't come in and their dogs barking at this other dog and oh wait do you want to make a return appointment like there's no time for that so um, it was very smooth on their end as well so and the other thing is too um, we use these same folders to put the cards so I actually would shoot 
a separate card for each client in case it got backlogged, like downloading and knowing like which dog, which client. So we literally could put the cards in here with the envelopes, um, stack them up, and I just would have somebody downloading them all, and then they'd start loading them into Lightroom and start editing. So we do shoot them um, in RAW. So um, anyway, so that's really like it's the release form, it's their information folder, but what I love about this, when we talk about organization, and this is for the whole studio how we do this, this was a huge thing for us when we switched over to the system years ago as far as the paper trail, because we were getting like these huge banker boxes. As you're in business longer, you like just start to collect stuff. So I had these banker boxes full of negatives, and then that turned into banker boxes full of, you know, um, multiple DVDs and CDs and you know whatever the storage options were at the time and we do these handwritten manila envelopes and they take up all the space these fit two up in a file cabinet and they're all printed and legible and they're dated so literally I can store twice as much stuff in the same amount of space I could do just one envelope and it's real organized and clean and we put in their uh, disk with their RAWs and their JPEGs and then we have a print off of everything that they order that just gets folded in half in there so um, we have things archived and backed up, and when we're talking with Photoshop with Jed and Workflow, we can go into some more of that technical stuff. But on the paper trail side of it, um, we've actually had to do this, unfortunately, and it, we've always been fine. Like, I don't want to ever rely on the disks being what we need to go back to, but we could if we had to. You know, we don't guarantee anything to the client except for what they order, but if they did come back and need something, um, we can actually very easily find these folders now. They're organized, they're alphabetized, um, and the disks are in there, everything they ordered if they want to reprint something. You know, client's home, unfortunately something happens, it burns down, we need to replace it. Um, this has just been a tremendous um, paper trail for us. And these same folders actually go through our workflow system in bins. We actually have to communicate between employees. So we have a bin that's like, needs edited, needs to place an order, is at the lab. So you actually have a paper trail that at any point in time I can see um, where a client's order is at and what's happening with it. And that's really important now, the way we've downsized our business. It's like plenty of time, there's an employee there with nobody else there, or I'm gone, or they don't know what the other person did. So it's not like all of us just being there all day, maybe you wouldn't need that kind of a system as much, but it's really important now, like that's our way of communicating. Um, so yeah, tons of volunteers, the organization is key. Um, like I said, the results that first year alone um, was 130 animals and a wait list of 30. Uh, we had tons of free press. And the thing with free press, um, what that really is, is just you taking the effort to fill out a press release form. And all a press release form is, it's really like a, a, the date, your information about your business, what you're doing. I will give you a couple um, key things that if you tie in, I mean, I wanted to tie in with the charity because I wanted to do that. I wanted to donate to the local animal shelter. The reality and the truth is, if with your business, you're gonna do some sort of um, help for somebody else in the community, um, you're giving back to the community, it is definitely more likely that your story will get covered or picked up um, because it's not just about you and your business, like you're doing something good for the community. Um, and so it's a very, very simple um, form you would just fill out. And we actually had all the newspapers um, came out, the video station came out one year, and um, it was, I mean, I really became like known as the pet photographer. I mean, it was, like I'd have people stop me in the bank, oh yeah, you know, because then they saw the article and they saw um, everything that was happening. So all this was free. Like, how do you even put a price tag on that? You know, sure, we brought $10,000 in from sales, but there's so many other things that happened um, from this event. So it, we actually don't even, we have people who book dog days of summer a year in advance <laughs> before we even have the date. They try to. Um, because it's like just, you know, other people will book a normal session, but um, it's just people know about it. They just know about it. It's a small community, um, and we've done so much with it. This is actually a client that comes in. Um, she just came in um, a couple weeks ago um, with, her, with her dogs, a, a normal session, not a dog day's session, actually, um, just with her pets being photographed. We had two cars that looked like that. It about wrecked our cars. <laughs> that's how much um, dog food we were able to donate. Um, I think that's an image from the first year, but I don't even know. I should try to calculate that, the thousands of pounds <laughs> of dog food we've, we've donated in five years. Um, how did we market the event? Um, this is an example of what our email blast um, 
for a couple years what they look like. Now we changed how they look like a little bit, but it's pretty template driven. We use Campaign Monitor, and we actually, when we design the um, newsletter or the the pick the dates at the beginning of the year, we actually go ahead and we design like the actual email blasts for all the events for the year too, and we can put them in and have them scheduled to send out and. That's really, again, important for me because I may go weeks without employees at the studio. You know, I mean, we've gone through major changes with people moving and leaving, and I've just downsized. So um, having all that done ahead of time, I can be here in Seattle. Nobody could be at the studio. You know, we could actually have um, something be already scheduled from months ago to go out to advertise, advertise something. So, and it, like I said, it's pretty template driven. So our next limited edition um, would look pretty similar to this and just flip flop the images, change the color. Um, so, so we're really all about trying to be efficient and not recreating something that doesn't need recreated. That's become really important more than ever now. I found myself almost like using and abusing the employee situation and like just because people were there like having them do stuff, but maybe it wasn't always efficient. Like it's amazing the amount of things we're still able to get done with a lot less employees. So um, again, a lot of that will come in when Jed's going through workflow and some of the software and the things that we use that saves a lot of time. The relationship marketing, um, we are in um, this. We have two vets offices that are completely decorated um, with our images. This is the one I already shared with you um, that she comes in every single year with all of her pets. And we have little brochures um, that you guys do have samples in your packet, and I'll bring one up here, but um, that you get $25 off a pet session throughout the year. So that's really the gist of all this, the little special that we do with, with any of the bakeries or the vets is just have some cards printed up. Um, so it's a normal session. Um, it's not for dog days, and it's $25 off. So it's just something simple, um, but that they can set out, that advertises our studio to try to just get um, every day throughout the year clients in the door. Um, oh, here's the thing I would like to share with you um, with the event. It's with events in general. Typically, I would tell you it makes sense to do them when your cash flow is struggling a little bit. Do them when your business is slower. Like if you're slammed in the fall, like we are, it makes no sense to offer like this special deal and and um, have all this extra workload when you're already busy. Um, we did this dog days of summer, not knowing it's going to be so big. And it, I mean, summer's not as busy as fall, but it's busier. I know other people, um, I've got I have so many emails. We've been teaching about dog days for a few years now. Um, Seattle would be a great one. Somebody did, um, it's raining cats and dogs. You know, like you could come up with like other cute, fun names uh, besides dog days of summer, but to have it at a time of year when it's what's better for you and when you need that extra income. And that, I mean, that's really for any limited edition or special. Um, just some other images from some relationship displays. This one hangs at the local vet office. This one, I will show you. This actually, this is not the actual gallery wrap, but this is the file we sent off for a 3030 gallery wrap that hangs in the vet's office. And this is from the first dog days of summer. Every animal, right? Right? Until two weeks later, and this we is have it hanging in our studio, and the client comes in, and her pet's not on there. Like, I think we like miss like one person on there like, oh, after doing, you know, all of that. We're like, oh yeah, look at it, find your pet, they're on there. And it's like, it's not on here. Oh, sure it is, sure it is. And it's like, nope, it's not on here. So um, that was five years ago. I don't even remember what happened, you know, from that. Um, I, I felt pretty bad about that, but the concept was great. I mean, like we put all the animals on there and this um, now hangs. We had it in our studio for like a year. And that's what I'd suggest you do with some of your displays. Like use them, like get use out of them and then move it somewhere else. Um, and we're constantly moving stuff around. We have a couple key displays at the local restaurants and everything. And rather than keep paying money, I like don't keep getting new prints, like make it fresh by just moving them to the different places. Um, the other thing I've done, I've been known to do with um, relationship displays or vendors is um, offer them something special if I've photographed their animals, their pets. So like they're not paying full price to, to do images um, in their space. So that would be, that's like a 30, 40 gallery wrap that hangs in their space. Um, and I'd say probably the most exciting thing from this that um, happened was booking the regular portrait sessions. Like that really is like ultimately, um, because I still am children and family, like that was the, I shouldn't say, like that was the coolest thing for me to see because I didn't go into it thinking like that. But um, to literally hear people saying like, 
wow, it, I can't believe it took me that long to get in to be gallery. I've always wanted to be gallery portrait, and now I'm here with my pet. Not to minimize that it's their pet, but it's like, we've never done portraits of our kids. And people love their pets. Like, pets are their kids. In fact, um, yeah, I actually, one of the newspapers, it, it quoted me that, like, people really like their kids, but they love their pets. I, that's, like, the feeling that I got, though, from the people coming in. Like, they were, like, that much more excited um, about what we were doing. So there was just a good energy about it. Like, that's just the energy about it was just fabulous. Um, and then people coming in year-round. And this is an example of the um, one template that we have that um, is the $25 off card. So basically, yeah, Speed Gallery knows that when you have pets, they're a part of your family. Don't forget to have them photographed, too. Since Speed Gallery is pet-friendly, we're offering you a special coupon just for your pet. And so that's basically the $25, um, $25 off a pet session. So I went through, because we get a lot of, I would say out of everything that I've taught about, um, or we have our you know, pet photography products we sell on our website and all that stuff, like we get the most questions about this. So we kind of, I just asked some of the basic um, questions. Some of these I already probably answered, so I can fly through them pretty fast, but I'm sure there's people that have some of these questions. So how do you advertise dog days? First year was definitely printed materials, but then also um, um, Facebook, email blast. Now it's strictly just email blast website. How long do you allow for each animal? This has shifted. I think if you actually go through and look at every year, I think we played around with, like, now that we're not trying to book as many, I am giving them a little more time. So um, I think the first year we said 10 minutes. It's ranging from 10, 15 minutes um, for each animal. But that's where being organized and having the volunteers and the helper is key because you've really got to keep them on schedule. Because you guys know, it's just like anything you're a doctor's office, you know, if you're doing things that quickly, the first person that gets you behind, you're going to be behind and have all these dogs waiting, it'll be a mess. Um, so you really need, um, need to have organization with that. How'd your first try go and what would you do, do differently? We actually already covered that as far as um, I would charge differently and check in with the, the shelter about the actual food, the brand that um, they would suggest using. Oh, this is a good question too. Um, before I get into viewing their images. So the first year we had a call from somebody <laughs> trying to take advantage of the system. Like, this is a great price, right? The first year it was free. It was just a bag of dog food. It's like, oh, yeah, my cousins are in town, so we want a picture with, like, grandma and, like, all the extended family. No, my dog's going to be in the picture, too. It's like, no, 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 that's not what this is. <laughs> like, that is not what we're, we're doing here. Like, the focus of this, and this goes back to the question I was asked um, this weekend by a few people, um, are these images just of the pets? Or are these of the people and the pets? And so I treat this the same way I treat a mother with a child. Somebody calls to do a session with a child, I would always tell the mom, come dress that you could be in the images or that part of you could be in the images. Um, the focus of dog days, it's so limited what it is. Like this isn't like come bring your whole family and let's do family portraits. Uh, you need to book a normal session for that. Like I don't want to eat into that type of a session. Like that's good, that's a good session and good money that that's like its whole or ordeal. I want to spend an hour with them and do all the breakdowns. That's not what this is. So on the flip side, I know as many variety like options and photographing the owner with the pets that I can do. I will have better sales. So I go into it knowing what I need to get and what we've told them. This is the, the same idea of um, exceeding their expectations. Like if we've told them, our goal is to get a picture of your pet. You may be in it. We may need you to be in it. I mean, we have had cases, some of these up close shots where you've seen of the dogs, like the owners like holding the dog. In some cases, we have had to do that for these quick sessions. Holding the dog, I'm squeaking the toys. We get some beautiful up close head shots. There are no full length shots. That's OK for what we're doing with this. Um, but the clients, we have to be upfront with them and let them know that kind of, you know, right away that um, they may be in the images, we may need them in the images, but really the focus is of your pet. Um, the other thing is, this year is the first year this happened. This was just a couple weeks ago. Out of the whole day of shoots, we only had two of those sessions. It was all dogs. We usually get cats, um, but it was all dogs. But out of all the sessions, we only had um, Two of them be a single animal. All the rest were three, four, and five animals. Uh, yeah, and actually I take that back. The one, the vet hat did bring in two cats. So we did have two cats. So, because people ask that, that wouldn't be uncommon. So the way we address that is if it's just one or two, we offer them, they can do one time slot for one or two, but they're still only gonna get one image. It's still only 10 minutes um, and the bag of dog food. Most people don't do that. What we recommend is you just 
you pay for each one. And, and we don't actually give them full time slots at that point though. So I think for the session of um, five pets, we didn't give her 50 minutes. Like I knew I could cover it definitely in less than that. So maybe we blocked out, you know, 35 minutes, but she paid, you know, whatever that is, $50 times five. So like she paid $250 and brought five bags of dog food. So um, that's really a slick way kind of that's just how it happened. I don't know why it worked out that way, um, but um, that is how we would address it. I would do that if people ask. They just can pay that fee multiple times, like there are multiple sessions. Um, so yeah, that was a, it was an interesting year. Because some people, like the one client with five, she just wants them all individual. But then some people want, you know, two dogs together, three dogs or a dog and a cat together. And you've seen it in some of the images. We'll definitely try it. And I already pre-warned them. That's why I like them to pay the two session fees. I, I tell them, like, this again would be no different than with the family. This is what I'm going to try to do. I know this is what you want, but we may have to do this. So we'll try to get them together, but it may end up being I get two real, I want to make sure you get something great. So it may be two great individual shots of each dog. So again, if you let your client know all that stuff up front, um, and up front for me in that case can be like when they're at the studio. I'm not talking about doing pre consults and keeping them on the phone for 20 minutes when they call. Like, it's just like, I'm talking to them, okay, here's what we're doing. I've got their folder. And that's the other thing, I'm terrible with names. Um, that's why these folders are awesome. Because we've got everything written down. The owner's name, the dog's name, the kid's name, it's all just right there. And I keep that right by my camera stand. So if I'm like, oh, hey, Bob, you know, I can, um, <laughs> I can refer to that. 